So the dark offerings uh, has many historic points to it. Number one, it is the first horror film filmed during the pandemic under social distancing. And number two, it's star studded. It has some genre stars uh, that were around uh, uh, with some of the great ones. And, and here is definitely topping that list. There's Terry Alexander, who, who is an alum of George Romero's Day of the Dead. And he is part of this film and he has been part of uh, several of Marcus's movies. And so I'm thrilled to have him here. Terry, how are you? I'm feeling pretty good today. Jay, I feel pretty good. Good, very good. Uh, so you're all, you're all wrapped with the movie, how'd it go? It went very well. Uh, I uh, have a small part in this uh, feature. Uh, Marcus has written something that is very special again, and it's always good to get into his characters. I play Mantis de Bagan. He's a veterinarian. He uh, is in, he employs um, Sophia, who is the lead actress in the film. She carries the action. So, you know, you having a, a strong background in theater, you know what an expositional character is. He brings in some information uh, right up to the present, and the lead takes it from there into action for the rest of the movie. So it's a, it's a fun character, and uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. That's great. That's great. This is, uh, you, were, you were the lead in Marcus's last movie, The Last Call, if I remember correctly, and you were absolutely brilliant. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Now it won several awards and things like that. So how is it to work with Marcus? Well, it, it's always uh, uh, fun to work with Marcus. We have a lot of fun outside of the camera work and inside of the camera work. So it's always uh, fun to take uh, his suggestions because he's a watcher. He likes working with, with actors and, and their, their, their being. And uh, that's always really very special. Um, in this particular uh, genre and this uh, filming of something in social distancing and on uh, uh, the computer, there are a couple of interesting, not interesting, but distractions that you have to get used to. You always have to get used to distractions on a movie set in the first place. There's always a cable man pulling something by or, or you're sitting on an Apple box and there's nothing behind you. And, you know, it's, uh, it's always distractions. Your concentration has to be pretty accurate. And uh, it was easy because I was sitting here, like with you at home, <laughs> and so that made a difference. What, what's it, uh, now, now you say you have a strong background in theater. Yeah, yeah. What, what, uh, uh, what, what, what did you do in the, uh, how did you trod the boards? What, uh, what did you do in the theater? Well, I came out uh, in a play called No Place to Be Somebody, which was the first African-American play to win a Pulitzer in 1970. And I uh, stayed with that company. Uh, we were the first African-American company to, to tour nationally. And I stayed with that company for almost two years. And another uh, um, just wonderful experience for me was working at Lincoln Center with the great Mike Nichols in a play called Streamers, written by David Rabe. Wow. And it, yeah, it was an anti-war piece and I feel good because he said it was his best piece of work. He said that, and, and again, George Romero said it was his best piece of work from Day of the Dead, so uh, oh, yeah. I'm in heaven, man. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. I, I, I've heard of the play, I, uh, uh, I'm, my, my background's also in theater, so, so, mm -hmm. so you've touched the nerves there. Oh, that's great. Uh, how, how, did you, how did you go from, from Lincoln Center uh, uh, the, the best work there to the best work of, of George Romero. How did you get into, how'd you get into this genre? Oh, I, I was just uh, very lucky, I suppose. You can always say that, but uh, I worked for George because he was looking for something specific. He had rewritten the script, which was just huge. It was a long old thing, man. It must, must have been three hours as I read it. And he cut it back because they didn't have the money to do the incredible special effects they wanted. So they cut it back to an hour and a half and George was looking for a specific character because he had painted that movie script on an island, on a, a tropical island. And uh, he wanted that flavor in the movie. So he made the character I played a tropical, tropical character from the Caribbean, which, uh, you know, 
was was perfect for you know, I want the sun. I need the sun and we're down at the cave. So that's how I got uh, involved with George. Uh, he was specifically looking for something. You, you have that, that incredible monologue in the, in the movie. And, and, and so, so now that I know, oh my goodness, your, your, your theatrical credits, that must've been a breeze. Then. Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I've done some Shakespeare here and there too. And uh, it was literate and it had uh, tempo and all the other good stuff a great speech is supposed to have. So uh, uh, it was great to do that, man. It was just great. Oh, you have an incredible voice. I could just imagine you doing Shakespeare. What, what did you do? What did you do in Shakespeare? Uh, we did uh, Santa Cruz Shakespeare Festival. We did Coriolanus, Merry Wives of Windsor. And then I also did uh, the Brooklyn Academy of Music with Rene Bergenois and George Rose and some older fellows who were wonderful Shakespearean actors at the Brooklyn Academy. We did uh, Julius Caesar. And I played Cinna, the conspirator, one of the conspirators in that show. Extraordinary. Um, how, okay, now, now uh, I know the last time I spoke to you, I asked you how you summon up characters within a genre of film. Let's, let's take it one step further. Uh, here we are in social distance and you can't, this is a very visceral, this is a very tangible art, the, the, the genre of film. You know, mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't just scream on camera, I guess, and no one's there to hear it. Uh, uh, how is it to summon up the character? How is it to play with someone digitally, as it were? Well, as I said, it's a weird distraction. You're, you're, I mean, usually when you're working a movie, you have to use a lot of sense, memory, because a lot of times you, I like to call film acting, uh, as opposed to stage acting, you're acting in a vacuum, because you can be reading lines with a script girl, and you still have to maintain that intensity as if you were talking to the character. So at least as I'm talking to you now, I could talk to Liz and we could do the scene. You just have to get used to it. You have to do it maybe three, four, five times instead of one and right. run. <laughs> That's what this is. Let me have a safety on that. That's the best line a director can say to you. I got it, but let me have a safety. So you had to do it a couple more times to get the rhythm and flow. Uh, that I, was I, I, big part. I, 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 please continue. Yeah, uh, it, it was uh, easy after a while, and uh, it, it's not, I didn't have a huge amount to do. She has the most work to do. She takes all the action through the movie, and it, the theme, I had to introduce the theme of the movie to get people uh, interested in what might happen. And for me, this film is all about the editing. In a lot of films, it's all about the editing. And if we can keep you interested, like I'm talking to you now, wow, you got a great experience on your hands because Marcus is a young genius at the scary stuff. He, that's his trip, man. So uh, there are a lot of levels to this. Uh, some, some, the characters bring on their own pain and we can't resist looking at our little phones anymore. We have to see them every day. And that's the part of the charm of this film too. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I adored it. Oh, that's great. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Um, I, I, I'm asking you because like, like I said, you, you have so, you have so many, uh, you have so many chapters in your life in, in, in this profession. Uh, what's the, what's the good of, of these particular, cause, cause it, it, we're here to stay for a while. You know, we're not, we're not leaving our homes anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the good, what's the positive, of, of this new technology in terms of film, in terms of the arts? Well, I mean, we're always trying to present positive messages for our evolution, for our human evolution. Uh, the good guys and the bad guys, that's always a standard uh, for, for making uh, the adventures and storylines and films and books and, and the whole nine yards. And here it gets just a little more personal because it comes to you right here in front of you on even on your phone even on your tablet it's really close to us now instead of a group thing of going to the movies and watching with a group of people which is another, another very special kind of thing because i think movies are the closest thing to dreaming we do uh, we all sit in a dark room and these images come across the screen and we listen and we hopefully learn from the kinds of mores that are painted
in film. So uh, it's a little different, it's a little more personal, and uh, it's hopefully more effective in getting into our, our, our system and our, our souls and our emotions and stuff like that. I, I spoke to one actor who said it's actually better for them because there's no distraction. An audience is watching your face. You know, right now, that's it. That's the performance. You know, we can't, you know, the, the, there's the old joke that came out humming the scenery. Uh, the, there was, there's, there's <laughs> nothing else there but you. Uh, uh, how do you feel about that? That's it. You know, it's not like, okay, let's look at the special effects. Let's make the curtain rise in the orchestra. No, that's it. How's that feel? Well, again, I, again, it's all about the editing. Uh, Marcus has brought, <laughs> has brought us close in and he's made us come close away from the camera to present a room. And there are some special effects that uh, come through with the motion. I don't want to talk about them, but they're very good when he backs up and the special effects come through. So it's, it's very special. I, hope, I mean, I'm, I hope it works. I mean, really, truly, truly. I thought it was very good reading, but... The visuals, that's what we're talking about. Uh, I, I don't mind the distractions when I'm out there working in, in a film because I'm feeling the environment. I'm, I'm sensing everything around me and I'm sensing my other actor across from me. So I kind of miss that a little bit. Like we were talking before uh, about Day of the Dead and how back in the day, George used to be right there with you on the set. 10 feet away from you, watching your emotions, watching his characters come to life. That was very special. Now they're in a booth somewhere in the truck watching on the screen. So again, it's not as personal as it used to be, which I really love, actually. I agree. I completely agree. I get the feeling Marcus is, is very hands-on. Like you say, he's, uh, he's, he's good with this scary stuff. Uh, yeah. He wears a Freddy Krueger sweater to like as inspiration. So yeah, okay. but, uh, he he's a horror geek for sure, man. <laughs> he's he's seen everything, man, everything, and goes back and watches again. That's his trip, and it's uh, he's very good at it. Excellent. You you sort of answered the question uh, just now when when hearkening George Romero. You, you have you you've been part of history in so many ways. Uh, in terms of the genre, you were there with George Romero. Who's, who's one of those names. Uh, um, uh, please elaborate, because you already started to say it. How, how has the industry changed from the days of George Romero right there next to you to today in terms of, of the genre of film? It was a bit slower then. Uh, uh, you had time to think about things uh, because you, you know, like when the dailies came in from the stuff you shot before, the day before, they had to take them to the studio uh, the, 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 and develop them and then bring them back. And the director and the, 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 uh, would watch the dailies and see how it looked. They didn't want you in the dailies. No, 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 no. You stay out of the dailies because you might begin to copy yourself. And you don't want to do that. You want to stay in the feeling of what you and the director are doing. And that's a little different now because, again, as I speak to you through the computer, he can stop it and say, well, maybe that wasn't right or add a little bit, but he's not right there in your ear, which we, is, is great. Wow. That's great. Oh. Uh, Mr. Alexander, this is like the third time I've, I've had the pleasure of speaking to you, and each and every time is absolutely wonderful. You're, you're, oh. you're, you're a gentleman and a fount of knowledge, and it is an honor to speak to you. Um, now I just gotta wait, since we both live in the same time zone, I gotta wait till I can actually meet you. Uh, That'd be great, yeah, yeah. Which would be marvelous. Which yeah. Would be, I wish you all the best. Uh, uh, thank you so much for chatting with me. Can't One wait to see the dark offerings and, and the brilliance of the horror geek that is Marcus. <laughs> Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of uh, uh, Day of the Dead because now we have to wear masks. And when we shot Day of the Dead, before we went into the cave, we had to don a mask. And when we shot the scene, you take off your mask, shoot the scene, and put it back on after you finish shooting because the cave was so infested with 
stuff in the air, you got sick. The whole cast got sick. So wearing a mask reminds me of doing Day of the Dead. Oh my gosh. You're even a pro at wearing a mask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we go. Next time you teach a course, tell me. I'll be your first student. <laughs> thank you. Terry, thank you so much. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Jay. Thank you.